Nvidia just detailed the specs, pricing, and release date for its RX 9060 XT GPUs. We already knew they were working on these, now they're formally being announced. They also today talked about the AI Pro 9700 Radeon GPU. And in addition to that, there's news on the Threadripper 9000 series, including the Pro lineup of WX CPUs. And unlike Nvidia, AMD actually wants people to know about these things. Not only did they tell us about them, but they also will be sending them out for review with a reasonable amount of time without any additional requirements other than to agree to the embargo, which is exactly how it normally works, and that would normally make it not interesting to point out. But right now, it actually it's, it's actually really important to point out because of the NVIDIA issues. So anyway, the 9060 XT 16 gigabyte will be $350. The eight gigabyte model will be 300. Release is June 5th. The GPU die is the same for both models, but it's new from the 9070 and 9070 XT. Those two also shared a GPU die. The new die is Navi 44 for the 9060 XTs, and it's sized at 199 millimeters squared, down from 357 millimeters squared on the 9070 class card. And they didn't provide many first party benchmarks today, which is fine because we're going to have our own GPUs to benchmark. So we'll have those numbers for you pretty soon. Should be close to that release date. And then as a heads up as well, our information is from a pre-briefing. This is how they typically work uh, because AMD actually wants people to know about them. And that means we are recording this and putting it together before AMD gets on stage. So if there's anything different in the onstage presentation, that won't be reflected here. But from what they've told us, it should be basically identical, just a little bit shorter and more condensed. So let's get into the news. Before that, this video is brought to you by the Antec Flux series of cases. We previously benchmarked and independently reviewed the Flux Pro case and found it to be one of the best cases we tested last year. The Flux Pro features the modern trend of wood accents while also focusing on a high airflow design. We found its performance to be among the best in our thermal testing. The case also has a number of ease of installation features to make assembly and kale management easier. Learn more at the link in the description below. All right, so straight into the specs. The 9060 XT will come in two variants. There's the eight gigabyte, 16 gigabyte model. We'll just get straight into the details here. No bullshit today. As for the features that will be shared between the two, each will have 32 compute units, 32 hardware RT accelerators, 64 of what AMD calls its AI accelerators and a 3.13 gigahertz boost clock. Both models will run PCIe Gen 5.0 by 16 slots, DisplayPort 2.1a, and HDMI 2.1b. AMD also lists a range of 150 to 182 watts for board power, which explains the single PCIe 8-pin connector pictured in the rendering of the GPU. And speaking with AMD, the lower end of the range is for 8 gigabyte models, with the upper range you'd expect for the 16 gigabyte models. And that difference can come from things like VRM efficiency losses, the actual memory itself requiring a little bit more power, and then just some normal flex for board partners to scale the vBIOS however they might want to do. Now for reference, AMD's 9070 XT has 64 compute units, 64 RT accelerators, and 128 AI accelerators, or double the amount for all of those of the 9060 XT CUs and accelerators. The 16 gigabyte 9060 XT matches the memory capacity of both the 9070 and the 9070 XT, but with a weaker core. Now these 9060 XTs will be direct competitors to Nvidia's 5060 Ti cards, including mirroring the VRAM configuration with the exception that the uh, actual memory type used is different. So NVIDIA is using the newer GDDR7 and AMD for the 9060 class cards is going to be on GDDR6, which also helps bring down the cost a little bit. Now, as for how much that matters, it depends on the architecture and how much it's going to rely on the memory bandwidth and that extra speed, uh, but we'll look at it in testing and just see how it performs in the real world. Additional differences include the 9060 XT's use of PCIe 5.0 by 16 instead of the 5060 Ti's PCIe 5.0 by 8 interface. Now in benchmarking at by 8 versus by 16 on Gen 5, not going to matter. The place it might matter is socketing it into an older board where cutting the lane count in half, that's going to become a restriction in some configurations. Now, I'm told that there was just a bat flying around in the background in front of me. Not sure if you were able to see it on camera, but just a secret here. So that bat was actually the vampire of NVIDIA, which has been sucking the lifeblood and energy out of the entire industry and the willingness of anyone to participate in PC building. It's a new type of vampire. It kind of sucks. 
it's not really lower accurate. And these first party benchmarks compared against the eight gigabyte 5060 Ti, which we think is fair because it's a price parity comparison. We've got some numbers from them here on the screen for you. We'll just leave it there if you want to look at it. But again, we'll do our own benchmarking pretty soon here. AMD also announced new CPUs in the Threadripper family. So these are 9,000 series CPUs. They are Zen 5 architecture. Uh, and they are the 9980X, 9970X, and 9960X Shimada Peak CPUs. That's the code name for them. Uh, these have been upgraded with increased memory support and enhanced AVX 512 support for more demanding tasks. And we'll start with the AMD Ryzen Threadripper 9000 series CPUs, which includes the 9980, 70, and 60X. The 9980X is a 64 core, 128 thread CPU at 3.2 gigahertz base clock and has 256 megabytes of L3 cache. The 9970X has 32 cores, 64 threads, and a 4.0 gigahertz base. The 128 megabytes of cache is also fitting for the core count. And finally, the 9960X is a 24 core, 48 thread CPU with a 4.2 gigahertz advertised base clock and 128 megabytes of L3 cache. All of these CPUs will also feature an up to 5.4 gigahertz max boost clock, PCIe 5.0 support, the same STR5 socket, and a 350 watt TDP. For AMD's Ryzen Threadripper Pro 9000 WX series, the company announced six new CPUs, which include the 9945WX, 9955WX, 65WX, 75WX, 85WX, and the flagship 9995WX. Starting with the 45 and working our way up, these chips will come with core counts of 12, 16, 24, 32, 64, and finally 96 cores for the 9995WX, which mirrors the existing and the prior 7000 series CPU configuration just now on Zen 5. Both Pro and non-Pro Threadripper CPUs seem to resemble the same basic specs, again, as the 7000 series. In these spec sheets, there's a higher maximum boost frequency for the 9000 series CPUs, but a lot of the rest is familiar. One notable difference between the Pro WX and non-Pro series of Threadripper CPUs is that the Workstation series offers AMD Pro technologies, as they call them, which AMD says are used for security, advanced remote manageability, and, quote, long-term platform stability, end quote. Additionally, in the past, the Pro WX WX series CPUs are supported on the WX90 chipset in addition to TRX50. AMD hasn't announced any prices at this time for these CPUs when we're filming this, but the press brief lists a uh, launch date of July 2025, so we should be seeing the prices pretty soon. And then finally, AMD announced the so-called AI Pro R9700 GPU. Intel also just announced its B60 and B50 so-called AI GPUs and content creation GPUs. We have a teardown of one of Intel's new dual GPUs, where it's two GPUs, one PCB from Maxon. Uh, that's on the channel already, but let's get into AMDs. For specs, this RDNA 4 card will come with 128 AI accelerators, 32 gigabytes of GDDR6 memory, up to 1531 tops claimed, and a 300 watt TDP. Compared to its predecessors, one of them being the W7700, the new R9700 increases the teraflops in FP16 from a claimed 56.54 to 96. It increases AI accelerators from 96 to 128, upgrades PCIe to Gen 5, and doubles the memory capacity from 16 to 32 gigabytes. Unfortunately, AMD's press brief didn't include any CU stream processor or memory bandwidth information for the deck that we got for the R9700, so we'll have to wait to see those. Due to the R9700, noticeable configuration improvements over its predecessor. The new GPU ends up being slightly more comparable to the W7800, which has 140 AI accelerators, 32 gigabytes of GDR6, and 90.5 FP16 T-flops claimed. In its press brief, AMD included a slide to illustrate how 32 gigabytes of VRAM it gives users more options in their ability to load larger AI models by highlighting four models that could exceed 16 gigabytes of VRAM, but could be used with 32 gigabytes instead. Additionally, due to the GPU's ability to load models with larger parameters or that are less quantized, the GPU may also see an uplift in the accuracy of the model's responses. To expand on that point, AMD included another chart labeled Large AI Model Performance, where it compares a 5080 to its AI Pro R9700. Once again, this chart demonstrates how 32 gigabytes offers access to run larger models that 16 gigabytes just can't handle. And these results are expected. We think a more meaningful comparison, though, might have been using the 5090, which also has 32 gigabytes of memory, and that would give us a more like-for-like -like scenario, but uh, we don't really do a whole lot of ML testing, so 
we'll just leave that for someone else. AMD also showed the card's multi-GPU PCIe 5 platform, as they call it, which allows users to connect four AI Pro R9700s for some extremely demanding models that need up to 128 gigabytes of combined VRAM and theoretically four times the computing power. And we didn't get prices for that one, but we're mostly gonna be focused on the 9060s. Probably we'll do some Threadripper stuff once we get those in, and uh, otherwise, that's it for this one. So thanks for watching. We need to get out of here because now the mosquitoes are getting me. So first it was the vampiric blood sucking bats from NVIDIA, and now they've now they've sent their mosquitoes. So subscribe for more, go to store.gamersx.net, patreon.com slash gamersx, it helps out directly. And we've got a ton of stuff going up from Computex. Check the channel manually because there's so much that YouTube might not be sending it to all of you. And uh, we have some awesome coverage of things like Thermal Right, Haven, Height, and a lot of others, Lee and Lee as well, already on the channel. We'll see you all next time.